right. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, we're discussing the World Bank to Nigerians. Don't oppose or reverse economic reforms. The World Bank has urged Nigerians to support ongoing economic reforms, warning that opposing or reversing them would harm the country's long-term stability. World Bank De Country Director Dr. Ndiame Diop emphasized that rolling back these reforms could have dire consequences for Nigeria's economy. Finance Minister Wale Eju highlighted the government's focus on reducing inflation, creating jobs, and maintaining market-based pricing, stressing the need to sustain these reforms. CBN Governor Olayemi Kadriso pointed out the exchange rate adjustments will boost exports and reduce unnecessary imports, furthering, further strengthening the economy. Now joining us to discuss this is an international finance and economic analyst, Mokhtar Mohammed. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so we're talking about reforms, and we're talking about the statement from the World Bank saying we should not reverse it, we should not oppose it, basically ride with it. So regardless of where we find ourselves in the spectrum, just ride with it. I want to get your take on this statement and these reforms that are being discussed here. First and foremost, uh, we are a sovereign nation. Um, that's what the World Bank should know. Mm -hmm. We are not the World Bank's tool, um, and the people are more important than the policy of World Bank. I go back to a lot of policy that World Bank has introduced to this nation in African countries as a whole. They've not brought, there's no success story you can say about it. Mm. Most African stories have come out of their own indigenous way of solving their own problem. World Bank reforms are always textbook reforms, economic textbook reforms, that sometimes does not hit the reality on the ground. Now the World Bank is telling Nigerians not to, to um, even directly saying, don't protest, mm -hmm. don't do anything about it, mm -hmm. ride through the pain, go through the pain. It will take you about 15 years. <laughs> and I mean, at, at about 15 years, how many of those Nigerians can survive to be around in 15 years to, to eat from whatever reforms that they are doing? So for me, I'm not against the reform, but I feel that the reform does not have a very good structural foundation. Right. that try to lessen the burden on the people. The same World Bank they are saying in other countries of the world, they are all palliative, they are all subsidy in one area or the other. But in Nigeria here, there's no subsidy anywhere any longer. Even including public schools are not paying higher school fees. Universities are paying higher school fees. Every, everything seems to be going high. And yet you're telling us that uh, we should not... Um, and protest or because there's tear consequences. What kind of consequences have we not faced now as a nation, as we are now? <laughs> what other, a man that is down, fear no fall. That is what it is saying. Now, we're not talking about reforms. Reforms are good, but reforms that do not put food on your table. Mm -hmm. Reforms that take about 130 million Nigerians to poverty level. Reforms that are making a lot of people lose their job. Reforms that are making a lot of people not have food to eat. Reforms that are making a lot of people not be able to go to school. How long can you sustain that reforms? Mm. The reform is all about the people. If a reform is not beneficial to the people, the people have a, have a right to protest. Right. So, uh, yeah, um, with all of this, of course, they're saying, you know what, it would yield dividends in the future. And like you rightly said, 15 years is a long time. I'm not sure a lot of people would even be here at that point to say, oh, we're so happy that, you know, we took on this chance. We're so happy that we listened to the World Bank. But let's talk about the independence of Nigeria as a sovereign nation. Should the World Bank still be telling us what to do? Or is it that we have no choice because we still get loans from them? Um, number one, 15 years from now, the good thing is that you will still be here. I will still be here. Mm -hmm. So Amen they, they, most, most, most of the politicians that are saying that the reforms, I can assure you, not fair, but the most of them will not be around. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to laugh out loud. <laughs> Please go ahead. So, so I think you said the right thing. Uh, you, you, you said one um, critical uh, thing that you said about the, the reform. Mm -hmm. uh, are we a sovereign nation? Uh, is it for World Bank to be dictating reforms for us? Number one, I think we are a sovereign nation. Number two, I think it's an advice. It's not, um, uh, they are not put it for it, saying that we must have to do it. Mm -hmm. But you hit on another nail on the head there by saying that maybe because of the loans that we've collected from them, so maybe 
uh, to get more loans, then we have to do this mm -hmm. reform. That has always been the criteria of the World Bank. For you to have a, a, a facility from there, you have to do their reforms. Mm -hmm. And those reforms all sometimes always pay those work, they, 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 they develop economy, not the developing economy. So definitely, yes, mm -hmm. you've just said the right thing. Um, the ref we are a sovereign nation, but we have a uh, we have a right to say no. We have a right to say okay, fine. Let's look at this reform. I keep giving an example. The same World Bank did the same reform in Egypt. They told Ibi Egypt to flow their currency. They told them to remove subsidy in a lot of area. But the Egyptian government said, you know what, we are going to do this. But what are you bringing to the table as World Bank? What aid are you going to give to us? Because we cannot allow our naira. I mean, their currency. Mm. We are talking about naira. Their currency to be left for market forces. To deal with. So, what did they do? They told World Bank to inject liquidity into their system. And immediately, World Bank injected those liquidity, they started those reforms. So, if you have, on the first day of the reform, I mean, the, 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 the first day of floating, the currency lost about 50%. By the second day, where they have to bring in liquidity into the system, balance liquidity, the, the currency have stabilized and it has only lost 33%. And inflation is not 37% like what we have in Nigeria. Mm. <laughs> so you definitely have to tell the World Bank what you want and what role do you want the World Bank to play. So in our own case, we came, the president came to power and they have started implementing all World Bank uh, policy mm. without World Bank even doing their own part. Because this are, look, removal of subsidy, I am an advocate of removal of subsidy. But in the removal of subsidy, you don't remove subsidy and you do exchange it all at the same time when you don't have the liquidity to defense, to, to, to stabilize your currency. Now the central bank government is saying it will discourage importation, it will discourage uh, 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 It will not discourage importation because as it stands now, what is happening is that we cannot even export because we cannot even feed ourselves. Yeah. So most of what we are eating now, we import. So definitely that's why the cost of living is going high. So the, it, it, sometimes they seem to talk like if they are not on ground. They come out to you and they tell you about, oh, uh, we have capital importation has increased. It has only increased in value. It has not increased in turnover. When we used to have 20 people bringing capital importation and provide job for 20 people, we have only two people bringing capital appreciation and provide job for one person. And what that, what does that do? Because of the value of the exchange rate that has gone high, you seem to think that, oh, more, more inflow of liquidity have come into the system. Forgetting at the time before now, the exchange rate was 360. Mm. And if you do that by and by what you're having now, you realize that nobody's bringing any liquidity into your system. Right. Because what is the essence? Yeah. What, what was the essence of having a a result that is 39 billion and yet your exchange rate is one one uh, one thousand seven hundred exactly exactly because that's why we're here that's why we, we can we can even pay as high as two thousand naira in february for one dollar it's is ridiculous but now i'm thinking i understand that okay the world bank obviously would give the advice they wear the hats of advisors Okay, fine. But do you think that we're supposed to be doing everything at the same time, especially when it comes to the immediate welfare of the people? So shouldn't the government be thinking of the citizens even before implementing anything? Because, of course, that's what democracy is. That's what governance is to say, how can I be better for my people, regardless of what the World Bank is saying? In as much as we have to obviously go to meet them for loan, so he who pays the piper, dictate the tune. But shouldn't we have some form of say on how we want to even implement all of these policies and have a blueprint on when, how we're going to do it? In the sense that it seems like everything is happening all at the same time. We're talking about fuel subsidy removal. We're talking about um, electricity tariff. We're talking about inflation. We're talking about the floating of the naira. Isn't that just too much? to you know isn't that cumbersome to put on a sit on the citizens all at once i think the current government have, have, have maybe are taking more than they can chew mm. at the same time and i think you're very right um the president made that in what i was it famous or infamous statement now subsidy gone mm. we did not know the reality that petrol is the life wire of nigeria economy mm. every sector of the nigeria economy is driven by pms so when you make that sort of statement, you are saying that every area of Nigerian economy would definitely begin to see uh, the other side. And that's what we've been seeing thus far. Now, when you talk about policy, you just talk, you talk about the immediate, you talk about the short term, you talk about the long term. Now, I'm surprised that if I just, I'm surprised that the special advisor to the president uh, or media have not come out to rebuke that it will take us 15 years uh, for us to come out of this wound. 
Because I'm very sure if it was the opposition that made such a statement, it would have been all over the news um, talking about what a stupid mm. statement they have made. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now here we are, they are quiet because we, you, we as economy knows that reforms like this is going to have a very, very long-term benefit, but a short-term pain. But again, the pain, how are you reducing the pain? That is where the challenge is coming from. Mm -hmm. You talked about um, removal of tariff. I mean, you talk about removal of subsidy in electricity. Mm -hmm. You talk about removal of subsidy in petroleum. Those are key, key issues. Now, you remove subsidy in electricity and we don't even have the power that much. Um, and then you come up with band A, band B, band C, band D, band E, band F, even. And at the end of the day, the only people that seem to have power is those in band A. And so band B, band C are struggling. And so we have even decided to make electricity for the rich and the poor should stay in darkness. Mm. That's what it means. Now, that is one. Secondly, you are coming up with a reform. How much reform have you made available also to make food available for your people? It's key. There are three, there are only two, there's only two reasons why I need governance. I always say it. I need a government because I want prosperity. I need a government because I want security. And when you talk about prosperity, the first prosperity any nation wants to enjoy is food security, food yeah. prosperity. Let there be food at the table. So in this reform, as we are taking this reform up, how much of you trying to build food security? That is the major challenge of Nigeria today. Nigerians are hungry. Nigerians cannot afford basic necessity. Yeah. So how are you going to address that? It's all about coming up with a strategy on how you can begin to boost the economy via the uh, 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 availability of food. Hmm. Now, you can't say we can't say that we have not seen us trying to do some um, 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 some. Um, um, indigenous way of solving our problem. One of those indigenous ways, the um, crude to Naira cell that we, we, the president said they should do to Dango, they should give to Dango to refinery. But you and I know that that has not even seen the light of the day as at this moment, mm -hmm. because we don't know what the exchange rate is. Mm -hmm. They've told us that oh, they, they are, um, that Dango will start um, getting them um, crude by Naira, yeah. Yeah. but they've not told us what the exchange rate is. Remember, Mr. President said it will be at a fixed exchange rate. Up to this moment, they are silent about what that fixed exchange rate is. That could have been a game changer. Because if you say the, the currency is under value, and you said, okay, we are going to give Dangote a uh, crude, uh, um, Naira um, exchange for crude, um, I mean, using Naira to buy, I mean, to buy crude, buy the dollar exchange rate at 1,000 Naira or 1,200, then today you would have seen the price of petrol drastically come down because local that means we are locally refining the petrol one pms one then secondly not only that we are also beginning to reduce costs because in terms of the the courses that are incurred when they move from one high sea to the other so you would have seen uh, the, 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 the the price of pms come down and again you remember that the same government have told us that 40 percent of the pressure on the exchange rate is largely driven by those that bring in refined petroleum product. And you said by the time you do that with Dangote, you would have brought down the exchange rate demand by 40%. And that 40% would have crashed down the price. Rather, as it stands today at the close of, mar of market for the parallel exchange rate, mm -hmm. that is the, 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 the uh, parallel, it was 1,700. Yeah. And the official rate was 1,645. So even your policy is not because there is brokenness. Remember, also we came up with an indigenous policy again, which was that any household item that is imported into the country will not be charged tariff. Up to this moment, that implementation have not been take, have not been taken. Yes. Because why? The president said it was supposed to be an executive order. Later on, the minister came up and said, you know, customs said no. The Ministry of Finance have not given them the list of those products. Later on, the president came out through the presidential advisor. They were now saying that no. Because of the any goods that come in do come through the exchange rate, he has to go through um, the parliament, he has to go through legislation for them to be able to implement that. You make a statement without thinking of the where is the place of executive orders? Mm. Executive order, what it means is more or less like what you say, state of emergency. Yes. So we are not doing that. So I think we we have the indigenous solution. Mm. We just say it. Or we don't have the, the maybe the political will to implement it. Right. I think what the what the current administration is doing is they are they are not ready to take a bite of their revenue. They mm -hmm. want to begin. They want to enjoy that same revenue 
to the detriment of the people. For me, that is a challenge. It's not that they are not they are doing everything the World Bank said. The World Bank did not advise them to sell Naira to Dangote, um, crude to Dangote mm -hmm, by Naira. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the World Bank, they should do that by dollar. The World Bank have not told them that they can, they, they, they should not, um, 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 remove, they should remove tariff on um, food items. Mm -hmm. Those were things that they think that it was necessary. Mm -hmm. And they decided that this is what we want to do. But then, they have not had the political will to implement those. Yeah. Those two policies could be a game changer that will drive down inflation, that will bring exchange rate stability. And at that time, then you, you don't have to wait 15 years. You begin to see light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. What we are seeing now is that Nigerians only see darkness. They are not seeing light. They are, not, they are saying that we cannot see where we are going to mm. because we cannot even have food to eat, which yeah. is the most basic necessity that every Nigeria is saying that we need at this moment. Well, um, I totally agree with you. And it's quite unfortunate that we're we're facing this crisis because that is just our ordeal. Um, but I was going to ask, I mean, with this statement from the World Bank saying we should not oppose the reforms, of course, we should just ride with it. A lot of people critique that because they feel like the World Bank doesn't really, um, you know, take into consideration local context. And this is us, you know, as a nation, we have our own peculiarities. We have certain things that we need to do for ourselves. But as a finance, um, you know, analyst, as an economic analyst, what do you think, how feasible is it? for us to stick with these reforms do you think there would just be that light at the end of the tunnel even though you're saying we're seeing darkness right now but if we do certain things and what would those things be how feasible would it would it be for us to stick to these reforms or do we have to reverse it i don't i don't think we can we have to reverse it i, I, I think the reforms are necessary reforms especially right. the removal of subsidy because you cannot use your cash cow to be enjoying luxury Mm. All of a sudden, the removal of subsidy has drive down the volume of mm. petroleum that we consume from 35 million. <laughs> now, I'm sure if you go in there, we are not. They will tell you we are not consuming up to 10 million, and they are trying and to justify that well. now and say. And, and smuggling as well. It is reduced smuggling, so we hear. Well, that's, that's according to their statement. And then, then again, the good thing about it is that they are not defending that to defend their corrupt tendency over the years and saying that, oh, it's because most Nigerians are not buying food that, like they used to buy before. Mm. So you see, is that they, they, there's a cabal there that wants to continue to do things the way they want to do things. Mm. So that's why I'm in support of the reform, especially in the petroleum sector. That reform is going to be a game changer. Now, like I always say, World Bank is not in Damaturu. World Bank yeah. is not in Kebi. Mm -hmm. World Bank is not in Jalingo. World Bank is not in Nguru. World Bank is not in my village. Mm -hmm. So they don't, they don't know the practicality of the challenges of my village. So we as Nigeria, we know the challenge. The challenge yeah, yeah. that we have as a nation now is insecurity. And this insecurity has has hindered farmers from going to farm. Mm. That is why basic things that we normally produce here, like beans, we cannot produce it because the farmers cannot go to farm again because of banditry, because of terrorism. Mm. Those are things that we should begin to address. Insecurity. From If we address insecurity, then we we'll begin to get food security. Now, in terms of having a um, removal of subsidy, yes, the CMG buses are good, are good things to look at. The, but before you remove those subsidies, before you have done all those things, you would have think about bringing all those CMG buses. Rather than promising those buses now for the past two years, you've not been able to bring up to 100 of CMG buses into the country. So those are things that we need to do. Secondly, we need to begin to look at agriculture. Mm. What can we do? What, how can we support farmers? Mm. Not just by throwing money to them. Remember, we have thrown money to trader money, uh, food for all. All those mm -hmm. things are not really... What are we doing strategically to boost agriculture? Mm -hmm. That is one thing that we need to do. Secondly, we need to look at our oil. How can we help? How can we bring down insecurity? How can we bring down oil theft? Yes. How can we increase production? Because the current challenge that we are having with the, the refinery, whether Dangote refinery or NMPC or whatever, is in the area of the ability to produce. Mm -hmm. If we are not producing more, we cannot have more efforts in our economy. And again, because we are not doing the Dangote is not paying in Naira, that will reduce the effects that will come to our economy. So the only way that we can in continue to increase the effect that comes in our economy and bring down cost of refined petroleum is to improve production. 
so that the 1.5 million barrel can go into the international market and the remaining 400,000 barrel can go to Dangote. So we, we, it's not rocket science. Before now, we have done 2.5 million barrel. So it's all about knowing how to address what has become like, like, like a monster or a theft. So those are the things that we need to do. And if we are able to do those things, definitely it will not take us 15 years. Mm. It's prediction, which is, which is good. You can predict. But like I said, what, what the World Bank is saying, the World Bank is not saying that, oh, for the next um, 15 years, we'll keep suffering, suffering, suffering. No, mm. if you leave that report. It's saying that before we begin to see a total turnaround in the economy, Mm. It may take up to 15 years. So what it means in for every year, there must be a, what we call KPG. What are we achieving? What are the objectives? What have we, have we been able to achieve supply, especially in the area of uh, uh, PMS? Supply stability first before we begin to talk about reduction in price. Because when supply is met, then demand begins to come down, then the price will go down. Mm. When supply is met, a local refinery, NNPC is producing, all other local refineries that are coming up are producing, definitely we'll see the cost come down. So it's not that for the next 15 years we'll continue to suffer. Mm. But what they are saying is if we continue to do what we are doing, in the next 15 years we'll be totally be out of the wood. But in doing that, every year there must be, every, every reform must have its expiring date. Mm. You can't continue to reform the petroleum sector for the whole four years or five years. No, there's a point that the reforms have come that you begin to see the result. It's like a man that is investing. It's like a man that is taking is saving his saving his money in an account. He first of all starts with five thousand. So it doesn't look big, but at the end of the year he sees sixty thousand. Mm. Then he begins to say, Wow, I'm beginning to see what I'm doing is coming up with results. So that is what we should be doing. Nigeria economy, what we should be thinking, they talk about the Chinese bamboo tree. We buy for the first five years. It seems to be the, 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 the shortest tree in the forest. But in the next five years, it becomes the tallest tree. How? It's not because all the other five years was not growing, but it was, make, it, it was growing its roots to be yeah. very strong, to maintain the height that he was going to get to. So that is what we should do. The foundation should be very, very strong. Mm. But in putting the foundation, you should also begin to see the structure comes up gradually, gradually, like a building. Thank you so much for that. And I think that is, that is definitely imperative because um, that's what we want. Everybody in Nigeria, we definitely want that. We want to be able to gain roots and then grow to the greatest height. But I think one thing that we also expect from the government is the ability to communicate um, clearly. You know, let us know what the roadmap is. What is the blueprint? What are we doing this first year? This is where this is what we expect to see. These are these are the desired results. Exactly. And after then, you review. You're like, okay, this is the next stage. So we know what is to exactly. come because at this point, it just seems like we're being bamboozled. Everything is hitting us left, right, and center. And because you, you just don't even know how to coordinate yourself. Yeah, you just don't know how because to. Because they are doing. Yeah. They are doing. They are doing too much. Yes. They are trying to achieve too much at, in the shortest possible time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they are not. Mm -hmm. They are not strategizing. They are not um, doing it. And again, their lifestyle also is not saying that they are. Yeah. They are taking the bite. Mm. Their lifestyle is still the same type of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They are seeing. They are. They are still paying themselves Ugo's allowances for mm -hmm. traveling. Maybe they are not the taking the bite. Are the instructors are still enjoying. They are still riding 406. Mm -hmm. They are now riding. Um, 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 they are now riding legs of 600. Mm. The president has his own car. The president has just bought a, a, a new private jet. So their lifestyle is not commensurate with what they are telling us to do. Mm. In as much as you are telling us there is light at the tunnel, let us see your lifestyle. True. For a man that is building his house, if a man is building a house, he will not continue to enjoy the kind of luxury he used to enjoy when he was when he wasn't building. Mm. There will be some things that he cannot enjoy because he said, "Now nah, I'm building a house. Mm. By the time I finish my house, I'll, it's what we expect from the government. Yeah. Government should let too. we should see it in their lifestyle that do we are in this together. Mm. We also we are taking a bite of a lot of things that naturally should be ours, mm. not with the lifestyle is still the same. Mm. We are still having governors traveling outside the shore of the country mm. to have parties. We have the <laughs> You it's can okay. go on and on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mukta. This is where we have to wrap it up here. It's been a pleasure conversing with you and discussing this. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you.
My pleasure, Olive. Thank you. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. We've been speaking with Mukta Mohammed, is an international finance and economic analyst. And we've just been talking about the statements from the World Bank saying that we shouldn't oppose or reverse the reforms. We'll go on a short break now. And when we return, we'll be talking about how Akande has criticized Tinubu and Shatima's simultaneous foreign trips. Please stay with us.